Hi, welcome to today's video. This is a little kind of a how do I do kind of a uh, video. Now, I work on a commission with uh, to paint these well, a bunch of Neptune uh, Cthulhu uh, miniatures, and this happens to be uh, Badger's Commandos and the uh, a few of the Investigator uh, Pack One. <clears throat> now, I wasn't thinking about doing the video until after I already started, so just to kind of catch you up to where I am, the first thing I do with all the models um, is, of course, you prime them. You just, I partially assemble them. So here's an example. Uh, he doesn't have his weapon on. This is one of the investigators. This is, he is completely built because I can get to him. You know, there's nothing really blocking my access to him. It's one other one of the investigators. This one has a lot of little... There's a what I call fiddly bit. She has a uh, gun that she carries that is not on. It's actually coming across in front of her, so that would block my paintbrush access. So it's separate. I'll paint that separately. And then there's a, a back creature that comes out of her. So th this is separate because, again, I don't want it to interfere with access to the model. <clears throat> Those are just examples. Everything was painted, uh, the base coat. In my case, in this particular case, because I'm working with some... Uh, standard British uniform colors. I use the skeleton bone from our painter. And for example, uh, so here's one of the commandos. And what I decided to do, as far as before I even started, is I went through and looked at the colors. What do they really do? Now, commandos di didn't wear the red berets, they wore the greens. Uh, the reds are for the paratroopers. But you know what? I don't think it matters for. Because this is a, you know kind of a mythological or a fantasy type of a uh, take on World War II. So what I thought though, it, it makes a lot more sense to attack a project like this by basing it on existing or historical patterns. So uh, if you took look closely with this figure here, you can see he has some camouflage uh, patterns on his shirt, very much like the Dennis and Smocks that the uh, paratroopers had. So I figured, okay. Let's uh, kind of base these on the paratroopers' uniforms. Go ahead and we'll use the <clears throat> maroon or red berets. Of course, these are completely different guns, uh, for, you know, specific to this setting. So, But again, we can base it on some of the existing uh, approaches to building those models. So, first thing to do is pick the right colors. And so what I did, let me kind of show you real quick. Starting with de the Denison smock. I decided to go with uh, flat earth, uh, brown beige, flat brown, and reflective green. Those are the four colors of, that are in the smock. All right, and so I'm going to base the entire smock in the flat brown and then work the colors from there. Now, the pants, trousers will be English uniform, which makes perfect sense. Uh, I decided I'm going to use. Gunmetal gray for the, the guns. The hoses can be German gray. The berets, I'm going to start with uh, a base of uh, Reaper paints uh, using maroon. I want to see what they call it here. Yes, maroon red. Okay. And just regular flat flesh will take care of the, the skin tones. That should get me through pretty much everything in the commandos themselves. I'll be using some RAF blue. Uh, it'd be a field blue uh, for a couple of the the uh, investigator units, and for this guy who looks a whole lot like an American paratrooper, I'm going to use some colors that'll match uh, paratroopers or U.S. Army garb. All right, so once you've picked your colors, then you have obviously base coat. <clears throat> now, this is just one approach of many. I think it's a quick, good way to get the tabletop quality you want without spending hours and hours and hours on your models and still get something that looks good. So the very first thing to do is throw a base coat. Now what I usually do when I start is I start with the lowest level of work up, so you start with the skin. Uh, but it, there's so little skin it makes painting the rest of the model tedious. So instead I started with the smock and the pants. So there's the flat brown, or sorry, flat earth and the English uniform pants. 
<clears throat> once you've got the base coat down for the bulk of the model, now you can go back and do stuff like the, the flesh. So it's a matter of simply getting the uh, color out, throw it onto a palette, and brush from there. Alright, I use, for the flesh, I use kind of a, a fine brush. Not too small, though. Uh, compare it to <coughs> the head. It's about the size. But it's just small enough I can get to the all the recesses. So, let's go ahead and we'll just quickly do that. Now I'm painting over the beard, because I'll do the beard later. Again, I am taking the approach of lowest level first. Now if I do happen to get paint on the collar or somewhere I don't want it, I can always go back and clean it up. Either with a brush and just kind of clean up the spot or go back with the paint later. So, <clears throat> now I've already done the, the gun arms uh, one thing I did, I just kind of an FYI, the pipes and backpacks I base coated, or sorry, primed black. So I think that'll give a good contrast. So, just going to go through all the models and take care of the the skin. Some of them have hands uh, that are already on this on the base model. Some are actually uh, on the gun. So let's take a quick look here. Now, invariably, you're going to find your, yourself a spot where you may have missed earlier. Again, it's, it's, it's nothing to go back and just do a quick touch-up. You're always going to be touching up, and you are actually doing some layering uh, of colors. Because on over the base coat, you're actually going to do some highlights eventually, so don't be too worried if you occasionally find yourself missing a spot. It happens. Okay. Alright, so we'll just go ahead and plow through these and wait for the next I'll touch base with you and the next step. Alright, <clears throat> I had painted all the flesh color. Now I'm going to let that dry uh, before I actually do the touch ups, so the collars and, and other parts I may have missed before. But I wanted to go over this model real quick. This one's the one that stands out. It's a little different. Unlike the rest, he actually is wearing a kilt. Now, in the, on the box, he uh, stands separate from the rest. You know, he, but see, the thing is, his kilt isn't really a kilt. I mean, it's a kilt, but it doesn't have its, its military colors. Now, I honestly think that it would look a whole lot cooler if it was more of a tartan. So, I'm going to take that approach. And I figure I'll let you know kind of how I'm going to go about doing that real quick. And while the paint's drying for the flesh, I'm going to go ahead and start by... He has a sporin on there as well as the kilt itself. So I'm going to go ahead and paint his kilt with the base maroon, uh, red maroon, or maroon red by Reaper. And then <clears throat> from there, I'll, I'll begin using uh, colors similar to like dark sand, which will be a yellow, but it you know be some of the thinner thinner stripes, and I'll also be able to use uh, this German gray to go in against and get some even some of the darker lines. So I would like to, I don't want to, I'm not going to be very specific. It's not going to follow any specific pattern uh, of any clan, uh, Scottish clan, because I don't I don't want anybody to be distracted by that. I just want to get the impression of a kilt that has some. Uh, association with someone or some group, kind of like the Black Watch kilt does, the Royal kilts do. There's, there's so many. So the tartans, that's the next step. So again, taking a uh, same small brush uh, with most of the model uh, doing these details, you're going to use a smaller brush. So let's just go ahead and attack that. 
I'm going to do this one separate from the berets because I would be holding the berets often as I pick the models up. So I'm going to do the berets last uh, in the maroon. But I will do the maroon right now for the, the kilt. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, so kilt's done. And oh, there's one, there is one more color I forgot to mention I was going to be using. And that is uh, a khaki. I'll be using khaki for the webbing, just like the uh, for typical British uniforms. Uh, man, I'm really tempted to do that maroon on the berets. <laughs> Maybe I will at least do a base coat of that just to give... I have to pick them up differently. All right, might as well. No sense in wasting the paint. Um, the maroon is the base coat because it's going to get highlighted with a slightly brighter red. And there's also a black trim I have to put on it as well. So. To give you an idea, I didn't want to have him put did his beret. I'm not going to do the rest because I do plan on. I'm just going. To, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to wear off that beret color, but that'll be. I think that complements really well. You'll have the flat earth and camo uh, smock with the, the kilt matching the beret. I think that'll look really good. All right. Okay. All right. On to the next color. Alright, so next step, I'm just going to go ahead and clean up any parts I may have missed, clean up the, where I may have gotten the flesh in the wrong spot, and I'll let you know what, I'll get back with you when I'm, when I'm yeah. Oh. 
Alright, now with everything kind of touched up, ready to go, I'm just going to start with some German Grey and do all their boots. That'll be the next thing. Um, except for the officers uh, who, are, who had um, a brown boot, most uh, the British were wearing the uh, ammunition boots, which are black. Alright, so that's the next step. It's very simple to go through. and You don't have to be too careful. Uh, now you'll notice on here, I am painting the boot, which is below the level of the, uh, the khaki. Yeah, I wish I remember what this, those things are called. Uh, it's an ankle, an ankle guard to uh, protect the cuff of the, the boot. It's so dirt and sand and stuff doesn't get inside. Alright, so again, that's the next piece. So just go through and you got 20, in this case I got 20 boots to do. And uh, I think the three from the private investigators, I think some of them are going to be black as well. So that's the next step. And I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done with that. We'll move on from there. All right, so now we've gotten the uh, boots done. Now that what I would call the tedious part is all the webbing. Now the webbing I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Vallejo's khaki. Uh, this is a good, again, base coating. So this is a, probably the best approach. And I'll go through this, uh, <clears throat> I'll just go through one model and I'll show you all the different parts that end up being khaki uh, as I go ahead and you know, paint through it. Uh, a couple of time moments I'll end up going ahead and uh, speed up the video. So let's get some on our palette. And let's start. So, just overall on a mini, uh, you're going to end up with whatever these things are called on the uh, base of the. I'm sorry. Whatever you call these uh, on the legs. I should have looked it up when the paint was drying, but I didn't. Uh, <clears throat> these little. Uh, guards down here will end up being uh, khaki. The there's Bren cartridge boxes. Now, why these guys have the Bren cartridge uh, bags pouches is beyond me. Considering they have none of their magazines, none of the guns look like they have that magazine. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. But anyway, um, it's good that it's on here because it does demonstrate. Uh, just British shoes in general. So those are going to be khaki. The belt itself is going to be khaki. The webbing, which goes around the top, comes down here. Sorry. Do that again. So the belt here, webbing, goes up either side of the, where the backpack would be. Uh, comes down into the top of these belt pouches, or Bren pouches. Those are going to be khaki. Uh, that is the extent of the khaki. There's a lot there on these, so it, it will take some time. So let's go ahead and just let's get started painting it up.
Okay, now on this particular model, they have extremely wide shoulder, uh, what look like pauldrons, but the way it's attached to the webbing, uh, I'll bet these are extremely heavily padded sections because these have a steam pack on the back. It's almost like having a, a flamethrower tank, only heavier on the back. So uh, I'll bet they're padding. And in the, <coughs> excuse me, in the uh, picture, they actually do show them painted the same khaki color as the uh, webbing. So I'm going to consider that the same way, and we're going to go ahead and paint those shoulder pieces khaki. Alright, there we go. So, oh, I forgot the belt in the front. Let's make sure we get it right here. Alright, there we go. So he is all set. Alright, so I'm going to go through the rest of the models and I'll do exactly the same thing. And that'll take care of the khaki. Alright.